In this video, I'm gonna show you five tricks that I use on my professional blockchain projects that you can steal from me and use inside your own projects. And these are gonna save you a ton of time and just make your life overall happier as a developer. All right, so before we get into those, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you wanna take that next step to mastering blockchain, then you should join my free training over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so the first tip that I wanna talk about is actually taking your smart contracts from your blockchain projects and putting them on a real live blockchain. So if you've done any of my other tutorials before, um, or maybe you haven't, maybe you're brand new to the channel, um, a lot of times, you know, step one is to figure out how to use a blockchain like Ganache, right? And how to, you know, install this on your computer and develop smart contracts with this, okay? And maybe you've uh, set up Truffle on your computer and you know you have uh, configured your truffle-config file, you know, your project configuration, to look something like this, where you, you specified a development network so that you can connect to Ganache, all right? So what's the next step and to make your project more pro? Well, you can connect it to an actual real live blockchain and deploy your smart contracts there so that you can, you know, put your project out there in public, people can actually use it, and you can start getting uh, testing feedback on it before you go to the main net. So that's exactly what I want to show you how to do inside of tip one, okay? So there's a few things that you need to do in order to make this happen, but just for reference, I'll show you what, you know, this file might look like whenever you build it out for real, okay? You know, here's a tutorial version where you're basically just connecting to Ganache. Well, here's what a real live version would look like if you're connecting to multiple live networks, all right? It gets a little more complicated, but I'm gonna show you everything that you need in order to do this, all right? So you can see here, here's the development network for Ganache. It looks just like the other tutorial, but if you wanna connect to the main Ethereum network, there's a lot more configuration that's required, some more libraries and uh, all that kind of stuff. You can also connect to the Kovan test network, which I've also done here. So what do you need in order to do this? The first thing you need is a connection to an Ethereum node, all right? So I recommend using something like Infura. Um, this is an Ethereum node as a service. So basically you can just sign up for free um, and get your own account and get a connection to an Ethereum node without having to run one yourself. This is a huge time savings because if you were to run your own Ethereum node, you'd have to download all the blockchain data, keep it in sync, and it's just a real hassle. So I really like Infura as a service um, for, especially when you're just developing your own projects and trying to get started fast, okay? So uh, you'll need an Infura URL just like this, all right? I've modified mine to take my API key and hide it off screen. I've just used nodes, uh, process, global, variable. Uh, I've used process.env. I've used a .env file to hide the secrets off screen. You can also do that. That may be another tip that you can use for your own uh, professional projects. <laughs> So that's what your uh, inferior URL looks like. And you'll see, you, you might notice that I've passed this in to this uh, function for an Ethereum provider. So what is all that about? Well, if you want to uh, deploy the smart contracts to a blockchain, you have to sign the transaction that does it. All right, and so that basically means that you need an Ethereum provider with an unlocked account. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if you look at Ganache, right, it's really nice, uh, because all these accounts inside of Ganache are unlocked. So basically, whenever you do stuff with Truffle and Ganache, all these accounts they don't actually have to sign anything in order to make the transactions happen. It's implied that you have access to write from all these accounts. So that's what makes it really easy to develop locally. But if you want that similar kind of behavior for a real account, uh, you must have an unlocked account uh, inside of your wallet. All right, so that can be accomplished with Truffle HD Wallet Provider. And this is technically a little bit of an out of date library, but I still use it on my projects. Um, you can see how to install it here. Um, Truffle HD Wallet Provider, all right? You can install it just like this. I've already added it in my package.json file here. Let's see here, Truffle HD Wallet Provider. I'm also using the private key version on this particular project. So uh, basically what you do is you just call it like this, wrap it inside of a function. Um, I'm using the private key version, like I said, so I've hidden my private keys off screen, all right? And then basically um, you just pass them in like this and 
call your private keys with the wallet provider because it only takes two arguments, this and then your inferior URL. And that will allow you to connect to uh, a Kovan test network if you want to or the main net, all right? So you just use a different uh, URL depending on the network you want to connect to. From main net, use main net. For Kovan, use Kovan, all right? So now I'm going to actually deploy this smart contract to the Kovan test network. Um, you can see inside of here, basically, I just have a simple smart contract. This is an ERC-20 token. It's just a test token. All right. Uh, I'm using the Open Zeppelin Solidity library to import this file. Uh, if you're not familiar with Open Zeppelin, basically, it's just a library of uh, smart contracts that allow you to get started fast without having to write a bunch of code yourself. Um, so, you know, ERC-20 um, is essentially a solved problem. So I've in, uh, imported ERC-20 here. I've customize this to be a mintable token, which means you can create new tokens on the fly. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Um, but basically, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and deploy this to the Kovan test network like this. So I'll say truffle uh, migrate dash dash network Kovan, or I just specify the network like this uh, from this package.json file. Or excuse me, from the truffle dash config file like this. All right. So, um, one thing to note here is that I am using a different version of Truffle on my system than I am inside of this project. Okay, so if you look here, this is using an old version of Solidity, but if I go to my terminal here and I type uh, Truffle version, all right, it's going to show you version 5.0.5. Um, which is using version 0 0.5.0 of Solidity. So I have a version conflict here. And I'm going to show you how to get around that. All right. So inside of my package.json file here, I, I, I said an older version of Truffle. So 5.0, not 5.0.5. So that's a version difference. So what I can do is actually just use the uh, Truffle version for my package.json like this. I can say node modules and I'll say dot bin Truffle. All right, so that's going to allow me to run truffle commands with the version that I've specified for my package.json file. So that's technically not one of the tips I was going to show you today, but you can just count that one for free. <laughs> so truffle migrate dash dash network Kovan. All right, we're going to let this deploy to the network. All right, there we go. It works. So I can uh, copy the contract address here. All right, I'm just going to click copy and I'm going to go to etherscan. So etherscan.io, let's actually go to Kovan Ether etherscan, kovan.etherscan.io. We'll paste in the contract address here, hit enter, and there we go. That's the contract we just created. So that's tip number one, is how to connect your Truffle projects to a live blockchain. So you can do all kinds of stuff like run tests against uh, test networks inside of Truffle with, with Truffle HD wallet provider, all kinds of good stuff. So the next tip I'm going to show you is how to uh, verify this smart contract on the Ethereum network, okay? So let's say, let's say you had a token for an ICO or something like that, or you just had some sort of smart contract where people wanted to uh, make sure that it worked the way that you said it was going to work. Well, you can uh, verify the smart contracts so people can actually look at the code on Etherscan, all right? So go to this verify and publish step, and I'm going to select, uh, let's see here, the Solidity multi-part file, or single file, excuse me. And then I'm going to select the compiler version of 0 0.4.24, I believe is what I had in my smart contract here. Let's see here, test token. Yeah, 0 0.4.24, and then I'm going to say just no license for now. Click continue. And now it wants to know um, what the smart contract source code is. All right, so that's a really good question, but we have one problem, which is, um, you know, there's multiple files that we inherit from and it wants a single file. So I'm gonna show you how to use a really cool tool called the Truffle Flattener. All right, so Truffle Flattener, what it does, it allows you to take your smart contracts from multiple files and turn them into one file. All right, so it's really easy. You can install like this, npm install uh, truffle-flattener. All right, so I've installed it inside of, uh, let's see, my package.json here already. All right, truffle flattener. Yep, there we go. So um, I create my own scripts in order to help do this. So I created a file here called a flatten.sh. All right, this is what I use to uh, just run this. So it does a couple things. First, it basically just removes 
anything in this flats directory. This is a custom folder here inside my Truffle project that I created. Uh, this is where I'll store all the flattened files. And then I basically just run uh, truffle flattener, this command truffle dash flattener from the node modules directory like I just showed you, all right? And then uh, I, pa I pass it in the source directory for the token, which is here, test token, all right? And then, uh, let's see here. I give it the output directory, which is flats, and then test token underscore flat like this. So uh, if you're running this command for the first time, you'll probably need to set uh, permissions on the file so that it can be executable. That would be chmod uh, plus x, I believe, flatten sh, just like that. Um, so now that I've already done that, I can just do flatten sh. All right, so we got a little problem here. So path argument must be type string. All right, so let me try that again. Sorry, I fixed the problem off screen. I hadn't quite installed all of my node modules properly. So that's taken care of. Let's try it again. Flatten .sh. All right, run the script. And here we go. We can see over here uh, in our flats directory, here's a test token uh, flat .sol, okay? So this is how you put all your files uh, in the same file, okay? So you could fix some of the spacing if you wanted to. Um, maybe remove some of these files, uh, references if you wanted to as well, but I'm just gonna copy and paste the whole thing, copy. Uh, I'm gonna go to my terminal, sorry, my uh, web browser, back to etherscan, paste in the code, all right? And I'm gonna check this optimization setting and go back here and look at my truffle-config file and say, so the optimizer was on, true, so we'll say optimized, yes, and I'll click, I'm not a robot, and verify and publish, and let's hope it works. <laughs> All right, there we go, it worked. So now uh, I can go back to my uh, terminal here and type truffle networks and find the address of the smart contract again on Kovan. All right, so test token, I'll just copy this, paste it here. And here we go, contract, we can uh, look at the code. Boom, awesome. So now you verified the contract on Etherscan. That's the second tip, I believe. I think we're on tip number two. <laughs> I've lost track here. Yeah, that was tip number two. Awesome. So now let's look at tip number three. Um, now that you've got your smart contract on the uh, blockchain and we can actually interact with it from the truffle uh, suite with the script runner okay so truffle lets you uh, write scripts that you can execute on the blockchain you can talk to your smart contracts you can uh, you know do anything with web 3 js that you normally can all right and here what you're going to do is basically make a script inside this folder scripts i've got one already it's called mint tokens okay so here you can paste in your uh, address if I want to mint tokens for, all right? And then I just put one. This is, you know, one followed by 18 decimal places. Um, it's just one token. So uh, if, if I go to the terminal here, I can execute the script just like this. Uh, I'm going to use truffle just like we did a minute ago. Uh, let see. So node modules, bin, truffle, exec. So truffle exec. Uh, scripts, mint tokens, so dash dash network, Kovan. All right, and here, when I run this, it's actually gonna create tokens for me on the Kovan test network. All right, you'll see those output uh, log to the screen, but then it'll actually work. All right, there we go, tokens minted. So let's go back to Etherscan. Let's go to the contract, let's go to the transactions, hit refresh, there we go. We can see the tokens were minted on the network 28 seconds ago. See the transaction hash, who they were from, all right? And we can also see uh, the information about the hash. We can see that the uh, mint function was called. Uh, you can see who it was from, who it was to, and that one test token was uh, transferred in this operation. And there you go. There's the mint function right there. All right, so the next tip is... Um, this is actually really cool. So sometimes like it gets really confusing when you deploy a smart contract to 
uh, the Covon test network, and then maybe also the main Ethereum network. It can get confusing because these contracts might have different addresses and you have to keep up with them, right? Like maybe you have to remember that this smart contract is the address for the Covon network. And then like, you know, there's a different smart contract address for the main network and it can get really confusing. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that completely by using the same smart contract address across every single network. All right. So here is the script to do that. All right. So this is uh, if you look on GitHub, go to Roman Storm's uh, repository of cross chain deploy. And this allows you to preserve the same smart contract address across each network. All right. So uh, I'll show you how to use it. Basically, you just have to use a RPC URL, just like I showed you with um, Infura. And then you give it an unlocked address, uh, a private key, just like I showed you in the Truffle HD wallet provider private key example here uh, a minute ago, uh, the byte code of the smart contract that you want to deploy, and then also the gas price, okay? And then you just add these to your environment variable and click run, and it'll work. So basically, like, it's a deployment script that's going to replace your Truffle deployment script, right? You can see the source code here about how it works. You can read through this if you want a better understanding of how the actual smart contract addresses are saved. Um, but that's that's it, right? So you'd use that instead of like the uh, deployment scripts or the migrations inside of Truffle like you see here, okay? So the last tip um, that you can use for your pro blockchain applications is um, your gas settings, okay? So whenever you're deploying uh, for, you know, the blockchain, you have to pay gas fees anytime you create transactions. And sometimes you want to, you know, save on those. So, you know, if you look inside of this uh, package, sorry, you know, this uh, where is it? travel dash config file, you know, I specified the gas and the gas price for the de deployments. Um, you know, you're paying these gas fees whenever you deploy smart contracts, also when you run these scripts, and also like when you use this deployment here. So if you look on like ETH gas station, um, this is a really great website for you to use to start calculating some of your gas costs, okay? So you can basically use a transaction calculator. You can, uh, you know, basically talk about the amount of gas used in the transaction and then, you know, calculate the gas price, okay? And then, you know, see what the amount of time is going to take for that and also, you know, how much it's really going to cost. So another way to get help with this is uh, Web3 Estimate Gas. Okay, so what you can do is estimate the amount of gas that's going to be used um, whenever you create a transaction. So you can use something like Web3 estimate gas by calling the method uh, with Web3 and then seeing what the you know resultant gas cost might actually be and run it into this calculator to try to figure out the time and all that kind of stuff. So. There's some ways you can try to optimize for gas inside your own applications. Um, all right, guys. So I hope you like this video. Those are my five tips, and there's probably even more than five tips in here uh, on how to, you know, level up your blockchain applications, use some of the tips and tricks that I actually use on my professional projects, and bring them into your projects. So I hope you uh, got some good ideas from this. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Did you like some of these? Did they help you? Um, again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you want to take that next step to mastering blockchain, then you should join the free training over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapu Diversity.